Once again, second down. Trying to get the chains moved here. Far side and Clarence Denmark gets the first down and some more. Finally, Blue Bombers get the chain gang working. And Clarence Denmark with the catch and run benefits and the missed tackle by the halfback out there, Arthur Hobbs. The man in coverage, number two receiver right on the hash is Denmark. And Hobbs goes with him, looks like he has him. But the slippery Denmark makes his escape to pick up that first down yardage. Will Ford in the backfield. Rory Colhurt and Aaron Kelly are the wide outs. Bobble snap, Hall smothers it. Blue Bombers actually have a pretty good percentage rate for touchdowns, even though they don't score a lot of points. When they get inside this area, the red zone, as it is called, or green zone, inside the 20-yard line to the end zone. That shotgun snap from Sorens in the center, just a little bit low. Early second quarter here in Winnipeg. Blue Bombers and Tiger Cats. Final game of the regular season. Four receivers to the left. Hall zips one out for Wallace Miles, and he's drilled by Ryan Lacey. Former Utah Ute. Lacey making his first CFL start. In that field corner position this week. Late season addition to the Cats practice roster. So again, the drive stalls. Sandro DeAngelis. From about the 23-yard line. There's the hold, and the kick is good. Blue Bombers surge in front again, but stalling in the red zone at Investors Group Field. The 101st Grey Cup playoffs begin next Sunday. TSN is your home for all the action. Eastern and Western semifinal doubleheader. First up, uh, the Alouettes and the Tiger Cats, Eastern semi, followed by the Lions and Rough Riders. You can watch it all live on TSN, home of the 101st Grey Cup. Slated for Regina. 6-3 Winnipeg to Boy Moore for a seam. Tiger Cats have already fumbled a couple of times in this game. But the Blue Bombers only a couple of field goals to show. Winnipeg, number eight. Five yards back, free kick. So they'll reboot here. Brandon Stewart was offside on the kick. There's Brandon Banks again. Huge game last week. 25 year old, five foot seven inches, 150 some pounds. Kansas State. Fame is fleeting in this game, is it not? of course played three seasons with the Washington Redskins getting used to the Canadian game the boy Moore follows a couple blocks here and he fumbled the football but last touched by to boy Moore so it will be Hamilton ball at the 36 all those returners having a tough time squeezing the rock today Makes you wonder. I mean, again, it's this is not typical November weather in Winnipeg. It's a pretty pleasant day. Daniel Sheffield, bomber special teamer, gets a hand on that one. Yeah, we've seen a few of these already. Bobbled footballs, fumbles, security of the football, paramount. Burris 
And coming back to the football, Dobson Collins. And he'll move the football and the sticks here up near the 49-yard line. It'll be a first down for Hamilton. Tiger Cat team is trying to get to double digits for the first time since 2001. First down. Last year, 6-12. and 12. Dwayne, they've always seemed to have that 50-50 proposition. 9-9. Nine and nine. They've had that a few times. Could be a 9-9 nine and nine team again. Heading to the playoffs. Chevy. Siobhan Walker. Drives up near the Winnipeg 53. It's a spot of about yard and a half, maybe two yards shy of the first down. It'll be interesting to see if Hamilton tries to keep that ground game going a little bit. Getting Siobhan Walker involved, but also with Winnipeg. Trying to get a lot of pressure, particularly with Burris in the ball game. You want to try and limit the hits on your starting quarterback heading into the postseason. Burris decides to go himself. Henry Burris head down. And I am sure Ken Hostin probably was cringing a little bit as Burris, who will take off with the football. But again, playoffs loom. The last thing the Hamilton Tiger Cats they don't care about losing the game. They hate losing their quarterback. Well, no question. And there is an opportunity here for Henry Burris to get down and slide. But you see, he decides to take off as DeMond Washington turns his back on the play. Burris today also could get to the 5,000-yard mark for the third time in his career. Back-to-back -back seasons is about 150 yards away from that. Now he's got loads of time. And to the far side. John Delahunt down near the 15-yard line. Well, you can just sense the, the misdirection getting set up there. John Delahunt, tight end, fullback, H-back in this Hamilton Tiger Cat offense. They're happy to have him back in there. He lines up in the backfield initially. Everything on the play makes it look like it's coming right with the Burris roll. And everybody forgets about John Delahunt. Heading down that seam on the back side. Usually in there as a blocker. When he and Darren Diedrich were out of the lineup, both fullbacks injured at the same time. Really affected this offense. Red zone now. Burris now in trouble. Dodges one. Throws it in zone. And Henry Burris quick to get up, but again, pressurized on that play. And lucky he wasn't sacked. Cats second last in the Canadian Football League in this area, the red zone inside the 20 yard line. They just haven't provided the finishing touch. And you consider all the weapons that Henry Burris has, for some reason they tighten up in this area. You see there, as I mentioned, John Delahunt, an important cog in this offense, even though he doesn't play every down. But provides a lot more options in terms of play calling there with the crack block on the end. Second and ten. Tons of motion there. Somebody jumped. Stala lunges forward. We'll have to see the Blue Bombers jump offside or was it a legal procedure against Hamilton? Looks like it's against Winnipeg. Offside, Winnipeg, number 91. It's a five-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. JT Gilmore, so it'll be second down and five. The Blue Bombers can get it to the five-yard line, or the Ticats can get it to the five-yard line and go first and goal. Blue Bombers not helping themselves here with that penalty. Walker's in the backfield. Burris shotgun. Here comes the rush. Dances now. Burris out of the pocket. High stepping goes forward. And it will be first and goal. But again, Henry Burris getting into that danger zone. He obviously doesn't care. He's taken off. Well, if you're, if you're going to play, you got to play. And that's exactly what Henry Burris is doing. Sees an opportunity to take off. Looked like he initially wanted Siobhan Walker in the flat, but the Bombers took that away. Burris takes matters into his own hands to pick up that first down. He'll go to the sideline now. 
Short yardage unit comes out. Orchestrated now by Dan Lefebvre. Lefebvre behind center. Looks like he's going to go himself. Goes forward, and it is a Hamilton touchdown. There is a penalty flag, though, back at the five-yard line. Dan Lefebvre gets across the goal line. Fever, the former star from Central Michigan, or draft pick of the Chicago Bears. He's actually scored a number of times running the football this season, also catching the football for a touchdown. And Al Bradbury. Sorting this out for us. Procedure. Illegal formation. Hamilton. Five yard penalty remains first down. So procedure. Lefevre retreats to the sideline. Henry Burris comes back out. Uh, it looks as if the Tie Cats may not have an end on the left side as it looks like all the receivers are a little bit off. The line of scrimmage, I suspect that's the reason for the call on no end. Midway through the second quarter here. Three-point Winnipeg lead. Touchdown taken away. Burris back in the shotgun. Five yards back, first and goal. And Burris gives it to Walker, a little shake. And he went backwards. For a second, had Siobhan Walker just continued forward, at the very least, might have been in near the goal line. Blue Bombers, though, did a great job to swarm Siobhan Walker. But one thing, knowing that you're playing Montreal next week when you're the Hamilton Tiger Cats, you have to be concerned with the amount of pressure that they're giving up, that they're allowing to get to Henry Burris right there. You see Enoch Moamba gets out of space on Siobhan Walker, and you see how he got to the outside shoulder before he planted, making sure he had that leverage to defend. Second and goal, Burris, touchdown! Andrea Jones slides into the end zone. So after all that, Henry Burris Finds Andrea Jones for the major. Just a quick hitter, Andrea Jones, number two receiver, is just going to run that quick out right around the goal line. Re defender, Demond Washington, playing with inside leverage. Down. Making that a relatively easy throw for Burris. You saw Kent Austin and Henry Burris. We've had, it. I'm sure, some of the great conversations that you'd, you'd like to listen to all season long. Henry Burris has really bought into breaking down his game. I mean, this is a guy who's a future Hall of Famer, and Ken Austin has basically broken down his fundamentals right down to his release. Henry Burris is bought in because he says the one thing he wants in Hamilton is another great cup break. Got one in Calgary back in 08. Andrea Jones, touchdown, Hamilton. But the upside of that, as they also found in Calgary, is you develop some depth, and that becomes valuable as the year goes on. Picking it again to Mario Fannin, who is spun backwards. Max Hall brings his offense on the field. The Blue Bombers now in a deficit. Get us out of here. Hamilton leads more ways than one here. Blue Bombers just 43 yards of offense. The one first down through nearly a full half of football. Trying to kick this thing into gear, trying to finish strong are the Blue Bombers. Trying to avoid a 3 and 15 season, last time 1998. Rory Colhurt, his first catch of the day, gets it over the 30 yard line. Brandon Boudreaux is slow to get up, and again, the hazards of this game, again, inconsequential to the standings. Hazards, of course, the health of all of these ballplayers moving forward. 
including one of your star rush ends. Well, Brandon Boudreaux, he just received what I would describe as payback for the bull rush he had on Glenn January earlier. He's in full pursuit here. There's Boudreaux running out. There's January with the ear hole shot on the guy he's been matched up with a lot today. Jumbo package, twin tight ends, and knocked down, and Eric Harris almost batted it back to himself for a pick. Uh, Eric Harris, the first-year player out of Cal Penn. He's playing that Sam linebacker spot usually occupied by Brandon Isaac today. Harris, a guy who made the active roster out of training camp, suffered through some concussion issues through the middle portion of the season. Yeah, he's been a very good depth player, can contribute on special teams, play various positions defensively as well, so a guy they're happy to have healthy down the stretch. Mike Renault tries to angle it. And Taboy Moore moving. There's a no yards call, so that will be a five-yard penalty for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. The lead 10-6. So Tim Burke, will he be here next year or not? Regardless, what will the Winnipeg Blue no Bombers yards. do next season? Winnipeg, number 31, five-yard penalty, first down. Obviously, our philosophy is going to be different going forward than it has been in the past. We would like to be more active in free agency. Um, we'd like to draft differently than the way we've drafted. Um, and how we acquire talent in the U.S., is we have to set up a system for how we're going to do that. And if you listen closely to the gist of the things that Tim Burke wants to do, the bottom line is feels they need to upgrade their talent in a big way.